This episode of Musical Hell is brought to you by Midnight Musicals. Welcome to the podcast Musical Underground. Thank you. When people say America doesn't have a culture, they're usually referring to the homogenized and mass-produced aesthetic designed to be as comforting and inoffensive as possible to its presumed audience of middle-class white people. America, like any sizable country, doesn't have a single culture so much as it has a wide panoply of them, drawn from different regional, social, and cultural influences. But when we talk about cultural developments that are uniquely American, we're often talking about contributions from its marginalized populations. For example, jazz, gospel, and hip-hop originated in black communities, while country, at least before it went all flags, trucks, and Jesus, is a conglomeration of working-class folk music from various sources. Music theater, meanwhile, owes a lot to Jewish creators, as does the development of American humor in the 20th century. So today we're looking at the intersection of that with Fiddler on the Roof and the stories of Tevye der Milhiker by Sholem Aleichem. Born Shalom Rabinovich in what is now Ukraine, Sholem Aleichem was educated in both Hebrew and Russian and experimented in writing in both before he found his life's work in Yiddish literature. A vernacular language, Yiddish was often criticized as low jargon unsuitable for serious writing, but Aleichem used it to his advantage in creating first-person narratives driven by simple, folksy protagonists. This use of everyday speech, combined with cutting wit and observations on human nature, earned him the epithet the Jewish Mark Twain when he emigrated to America near the end of his life, after experiencing many of the tribulations that would be reflected in the lives of his characters. So here's how it originally went down. Tevye der Milhiker, or Tevye the Dairyman, is a series of short stories written between 1895 and 1914, presented as narratives related to Sholem Aleichem by the title character. Tevye lives near the shtetl of Anatevka, not far from the city of Yehupets, basically a fictional version of Kiev, and has a wife, seven daughters, and a deep, if somewhat skewed, reverence for the sacred writings of his faith. Originally a woodcutter, the first two stories reveal how a good deed brings Tevya the money to start his dairy business, then how an unwise investment encouraged by a distant cousin reduces him to poverty. But the majority of the tales focus on Tevya's attempts to marry off his children and the struggles that result. Seidel, the eldest, rejects an arranged marriage with a well-off but older butcher to marry the poor young tailor she loves. Hoddle finds romance with a young revolutionary and eventually leaves her family to join him when he is arrested and sent to Siberia. Chava elopes with a Gentile and is cast off from her family, a heartbreak eclipsed by the tragedy of Sprinza, who falls in love with a wealthy widow's son. After the match is rejected by his family, Sprinza falls into despair, ultimately drowning herself. Finally, Bielka agrees to an arranged marriage with a rich man for the sake of her family, but the match brings Tevya no happiness as his new son-in-law is embarrassed by Tevya's low status and sends him away to the Holy Land, only to lose everything and emigrate with Bielka to America later on. By this time, Tevya's wife Golda and Seidel's husband Model have also died, so Tevya returns to care for his daughter. But Russian persecution of the Jewish community has increased to the point where Tevya and his remaining family are forced to leave their home. As they prepare to go, Tevya is surprised when Hava, having left her husband, arrives seeking forgiveness and to join her family in exile. Tevya does not say how he receives her, only inviting Alechem and the reader to consider what they would do in his stead. Though certainly a poignant musical, Fiddler on the Roof is considerably lighter in tone than its source material. This is mainly due to the trimming of Alechem's darker episodes, focusing on the elder three daughters and the family's expulsion from Anatevka, but also owes something to the musical emerging during the end of the Borscht Belt era. The Borscht Belt was a string of resorts and vacation spots frequented by the New York Jewish community in the early and mid-20th century. Entertainment, especially comedy, was a big draw at many of these locations, with the likes of Mel Brooks, Rodney Dangerfield, Joan Rivers, and more either starting or developing their careers in the area and creating a distinct comedic style that film and television would bring to the mainstream. Borscht Belt humor is quick-witted and sharp-tongued, often focusing on wordplay, self-deprecation, and insult comedy. When Yenta tells a man that his son's appearance makes him the perfect husband for a blind girl, or Anatevka's rabbi offers a backhanded blessing for the Tsar, they're following in the Borscht Belt tradition. 
Alechem's writing is certainly humorous, but in a much darker sense. His is the defiant, ironic wit of a people rebelling against their own oppression with one of the few weapons available to them. The story of Tevya is a chronicle of the systemic deprivations experienced and witnessed by Alechem himself, with the daughter's marriages reflecting issues that faced his community at the time, rejection of arranged marriage, rebellion against a declining empire, an increase in interfaith relationships, and the difficulty of obtaining and maintaining financial security in an increasingly hostile society. Tevya, too, is more prickly and harder to love than the jovial Job of the musical. A man who bothers his neighbors and alienates his family with borrowed wisdom from holy texts rather than genuine insight, stridently asserting his own masculinity while dismissing the understanding of the women around him, and whose misfortune is often accelerated by his own flaws. In this, Alechem's Tevya bears a resemblance to another piece of American culture, Archie Bunker, the central character in the groundbreaking sitcom All in the Family. Both are traditionalist, working-class patriarchs who are sympathetic despite their abrasive behavior, whose family dramas reflect in miniature the currents of a world changing faster than they can keep up with. The difference, of course, is that Archie views this change from a place of privilege, while Tevya sees it from a place of marginalization. But both recognize the value of a good one-liner when the chips are down. Gather round.